Uh, good morning to everyone and welcome to this uh, info session on the European Prize for Women Innovators. My name is Ciro Matas. I work at the EIT as a communication and public affairs officer. And uh, first thing, actually, I would like to thank you so much for coming. It is very nice to see that there's so much interest in the prize. And I hope we can uh, help you to uh, give you all the information and clarify all the doubts you need in order to to apply. Also, thank you for our speakers that are going to be uh, with here uh, here with us today, uh, sharing this one hour together. Uh, and uh, without further ado, we can uh, go into the details of what are we going to learn today. So basically, the whole idea of the info session is that we are going to provide a overview of what the competition is about, as well as the main price categories and the monetary prices, the timeline for the competition. But also we're going to go into the details of the application and evaluation procedure. Uh, most uh, importantly, the different criteria that are going to be used uh, for evaluating your proposals. And last but not least, we are going to have a series of uh, tips and tricks uh, section with our uh, guest uh, speakers. Speaking about speakers, uh, today we have with us uh, two very special uh, guests, Julia Bialetska on one hand, she's the CEO and co-founder at S-Lab, and she was actually the winner of last year uh, for the EAT Women Leadership uh, Award uh, category. And also we have Josine Bakes, she is the co-founder of Regenerative Design Academy, Managing Director at Imagine Cell, and she has also been a jury member at the uh, European Press for Women Innovators with a lot of experience in uh, Horizon Europe evaluation calls. And both Julia and Josine, they are going to give us their testimonials as well as their uh, own uh, uh, insights on how to prepare the applications. So it is going to be very, very uh, insightful on that part. But I'm also very happy to come with my colleague Jorge Canovas, which is the project advisor at ISMEA. He's a call coordinator uh, at, the, at the, this competition, and I'm also going to be speaking uh, today. Uh, without further ado, I would actually like to give the floor to my colleague Jorge, who is going to provide us with an overview of the uh, basic details regarding the competition. Jorge, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ciro, and thank you, colleagues, all of you, for being here today with us. It's my real pleasure to welcome you to this uh, to this info session, and then to go directly to explain you a bit what is the EU Prize for Women Innovators. For for you, to, as you know, at European level in the European Commission, we have uh, different prizes because what we want to do with all the EIC prizes is recognizing the work that all the stakeholders in the innovation ecosystem, all of you, what you are doing. We really think that in this case, in the case of women, we need to do and we need to to reward especially those women those, all of you that you are doing an excellent job in the search of in the in the area of, of innovation we want to promote what you are doing we want that uh, to show to demonstrate to the other ones that you are role models so that's why we are here and especially we have julia that is one of the our winners from last year and we want to show all of you and uh, to show to the whole community why you are the best ones in this uh, in this field that's why we want to so to invite you all to to participate in this competition in this case this year we are joining forces again with our colleagues from the AIT because we think that it's also is important that all of us are together uh, working in the same in the same area so that's why now you will see Chiro, the please next next slide you will see that we have different categories Two of them are the, uh, funded or, or managed in this case by by, ICE for, by the European Innovation Council, and one is the uh, European Innovation Council Women Innovators category, that is for all women founders and co-founders. We will go now a bit later when we will talk about the eligibility criteria to explain you what the difference between one or the other. But in this case, this one is the main, the general category for the for the women, while the other one, the EIC Rise Innovative category, is for those women that uh, that you have less that that there are that you are less than 35 years old. And the last one is the EIT Women Leadership category. That is, in this case, is for those women that have a link to the EIT community. But now, as I said, Ciro will explain you a bit more on the next uh, on the next slides. Ciro, please. And now here you have what are the prices? What is the money that you will receive in the case that you are one of the winners? As you can see, the prices go from 100,000 euros until 20,000 euros. We know that uh, in this case, it's not only about money, what we talk here. Especially, we are talking about recognition, public recognition and public support to you. 
because I think that's the, also the most important now later. We will hear that from uh, from Julia because, of course, the money is always helps to you and to your to your efforts. But in this case, what we did in the past, then we invited the winners. They were here together with us in Brussels with the commissioner on the stage. And then later we will accompany the, the winners. We have plans for the next uh, year to start uh, doing some kind of uh, more ad hoc support for the winners to go with you to, uh, around Europe and to support you and to show to the in the different conferences and places to show and demonstrate why you are the best one and one why the others should follow and learn from what you are doing. So now with all this, then I zero. I pass the pass you the ah uh, oh, sorry the competition that, uh, timeline. Uh, as you can see here, the competition is open until the 25th of September at 5 o'clock. Please uh, don't leave it until the last day, because as you might imagine, last year we had around 300 applications. So if you leave it until the end, there might be problems with the system that maybe there are too many people trying to apply at the same time. So please don't leave it until the last time, because if that happens, then we cannot do anything. And if it's blocked, it's blocked. Later, our jury members, as it was the case with Josine, they will revise all the applications between October and February 2025. And later, between February and May the next year, we will reveal the names. We will invite this, the, all the winners to, for an award ceremony with the commissioner, and then we will inform who the winners are. So I, for, with this, I wish you the best of luck. And now, Chiro, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jorge. So now that we have seen uh, an overview of the basic details regarding the competition, let's go into the details of the application and evaluation. And in this regard, it is important to probably start with the most relevant criteria that are going to be used to assess your application at first stage, which are basically the admissibility and eligibility criteria. The admissibility criteria, which are the ones that are related to your uh, the submission of your application, and the eligibility criteria, which are regarding whether you can apply or not, well, participate or not in the competition. I will not bother you much with exclusion criteria, just to for you to 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 put it very shortly. In the rules of the contest, there is a list of situations of exclusions uh, that prevent you from receiving EU funding, and uh, if you are in one of those situations, hopefully not, uh, whether uh, you wouldn't be able to participate, basically. Um, but yeah, for hopefully not, because it's like, you know, like these typical things like you are involved in corruption, uh, fraud, uh, and this kind of stuff. So probably this will not apply to you. Uh, now, moving on to the uh, important uh, criteria. We have on one hand admissibility criteria, and the baseline is, of course, that you need to submit the application through the funding and tenders portals. In this sense, you can find the links to the different categories in the PRICE website. If you want, we can share it afterwards, uh, the, the, the links together with the application, um, the recording, sorry. And uh, the application consists basically of three parts that need to be all submitted uh, together. So we have on one hand the part A of the application, which is basically just the, uh, the regular details of your project, like uh, what's the, 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 the name of your application, your data, etc. Then we have the part B, which is, let's say, the core of the application, where you're going to explain how you are meeting the different uh, award criteria. Uh, and that's that's what actually the the the, um, the jury members are going to evaluate, and then you also have to submit an up to 90 second inspirational video together with your application. You have an, a, an area there in the sub, uh, submission system where you can upload it. It ha has to be maximum 100 megabytes, and maybe important also to know that the part B, it has to be maximum 15 pages. Uh, it could be more than 15 in the sense that the submission system will allow you to submit. But what will happen if that if you exceed these 15 pages maximum, all the additional pages, the jury members will not be able to see them. So it is important that you keep within this uh, maximum 15 pages range. Moving on to the eligibility criteria, what we have to keep in mind is that there's mainly two types of criteria. We have criteria which apply to all the price categories equally, but then there's also, we will see in, in just a minute, that there are other criteria which are only for some categories, namely the Rising Innovators uh, category and the EIT Women Leadership category. Uh, with regards to those that apply to all categories, uh, the baseline will be that the applicant has to be a woman that is applying as a natural person. By natural person, we mean that you are not applying with your company, you are applying by yourself. Because uh, as, as Jorge mentioned, this is a personal recognition prize that is going to be awarded to you, not to your company. The second relevant criteria would be that you need to be 
the founder or co-founder of a company that was registered before the 1st of January of 2022. And by founder, co-founder, we mean that you were part of the core team which established the company. This usually you can uh, demonstrate it with the registration certificate where it appears all the people uh, who, who were part of the, of the incorporation of the company. And also important to keep in mind that in order to participate, both you and your company need to be established in a uh, Horizon Europe country or a um, Europe, uh, European uh, Union member state. And also that you didn't receive an other EU prize for uh, the same or a very similar activity. Uh, and it is important to, to uh, differentiate between grants. If you received a grant, it's okay. The, what you cannot, uh, what it cannot happen is that you received a, an EU prize. With regards to the category specific eligibility criteria, uh, because the EIC Rising Innovators category is for people under 35, uh, you need to be born after the 1st of January of uh, 1989. And in the case of the EIT Women Leadership category, as Jorge was mentioning, you need to have a link to the EIT community. What do we mean by link to the EIT community here? Basically, that you were uh, benefited or you are benefiting from EIT support or support from one of the uh, EIT knowledge and innovation communities. For example, you participated in an acceleration program, you participated in an innovation support scheme, you were part of an EIT labeled master, for example. Uh, there's many activities which could fall under this category, and basically you will be asked to provide a certificate or a diploma that, um, that uh, confirms that you were part of one of these EIT-related uh, activities. Moving on to the evaluation procedure, uh, the first thing that is going to happen basically when you uh, submit your application, and that's why it's so important to keep in mind all these relevant criteria we were just talking about, is because your application is going to go through an admissibility, eligibility, and exclusion check. So there's going to be an evaluation committee, which is going to look on whether you are meeting all these relevant criteria. If you don't meet the relevant criteria, what is going to happen is that your application will not move forward in the evaluation procedure. And if it happens to be uh, admitted into the competition because you pass this first stage, two things could happen. Either your application is going to go directly to the expert evaluation phase, that's where the uh, jury members are going to score your application, or if there is more than 500 uh, applications in your category, what will happen is a preview step where there will be a pre-selection that is going to filter the 500 best applications. When it comes to the expert evaluation, uh, the award criteria that the jury members are going to look into it are three mainly. Uh, two are related to your innovation and one is related to you. The two that are related to your in, uh, innovation are the breakthrough innovation criteria, which is going to look into whether your innovation is disruptive and breakthrough within your respective field and also better than other existing solutions. They are also going to look into the impact cr uh, criteria, which is related to whether your innovation is addressing a real need as well as is driving positive change. And the last one, which is related to you, the inspiration criteria, is going to look on uh, to which extent you're, uh, you are a leader, a role model, a person that had a pivotal role in the success of the company. Anyway, uh, of course, uh, this is like a very simplified uh, explanation of the award criteria. You can see them, uh, the full description of them in the rules of the contest. Moving forward, uh, how are the jury members going to score your application? So basically, each of the uh, uh, individual criteria, this one, uh, this three that I just uh, mentioned, are going to be scored from zero to 10, meaning that in total, you can have a maximum of 30 points in your application. But uh, we need to always keep in mind that there is a minimum passing score for each of the criteria, which is going to be six, and that there is going to be also a minimum threshold of 18 points overall. And this is important because uh, your application need to reach the minimum uh, passing score, both individually and at this 18-point uh, overall threshold. For example, if you had, let's say, in two criteria, you have 10 points, uh, so you have 20, but uh, it would be technically over the 18-point uh, threshold. But if you uh, have less than six in the third criteria, then your application wouldn't be considered for, uh, for obtaining the prize. And of course, uh, uh, the best applications that have the, the, the best score uh, in this sense are the ones that are getting the uh, prices. Now, having seen this, that would be basically the application and evaluation in a nutshell, and uh, probably you are already uh, 
uh, wondering how to how to apply if you haven't started applying already. Uh, the ABC would be that first, of course, we strongly recommend that you read the rules of the contest so you can make sure that you are meeting all the relevant criteria. And then uh, once you do that, uh, what is important is that you need an EU login user and as well as a, a participant identification code in order to submit your application. Maybe you have it already, but in case you don't have, you have to create uh, one. And uh, this is also important. Maybe you have a participant identification code for your company, but take into account that you will need to apply as an individual yourself. So if you don't have a participant identification code as a natural person, you also need to get this code. And we will see a, a video in just a minute uh, to finalize uh, on, on how is the process of registering yourself as a participant. And lastly, of course, submit your complete application with part A, part B, uh, plus the uh, up to 90 second inspirational video. Lastly, let's have a look at this, uh, at this short video. Probably you have seen it already, but in case not, I think it's going to help you quite a lot to, uh, to understand how's the process of getting the registered as a participant. Ah, uh, one second, I need to share my sound. Wix Studio we don't want the publicity. Diamond. One second. Do you want to there participate in an EU grant or tender procedure? There is a register where you can encode your organization's data online before applying to a call for proposal or a call for tender. At a later stage, your organization will need to be validated before signing a grant agreement or a contract. The Research Executive Agency is now responsible for the legal validation and the financial capacity assessment of your organization. Here's how the process works. First, you'll need to register for a nine-digit code called a PIC. You'll use this later on at the submission stage. You only need to register once, no matter how many applications you intend to submit. Don't worry if you get stuck. There's a tutorial available to guide you through the registration process. So, you've got your pick. You can now use this code when submitting your proposal or offer. At this stage, you don't need to take any further action. Let's say you've been successful in your application. The validation services will now contact you through the register. They will ask for your legal documents, which you'll need to upload. These documents include extracts of registration, legal entity forms, and more. On top of this, some of you may need to upload extra documents for the financial capacity assessment. You might also be asked to nominate a legal entity appointed representative. Once appointed by the validation services, the LEAR keeps your legal data up to date. If you have doubts at any time, the validation services will guide you through the register messaging functionality. There are also a number of FAQs and IT online support available. If you need further help, you can also contact the Research Inquiry Service. Register for a PIC today. The PIC will be the key to unlock the door to your application. There you go. As you can see, I mean, um, if you need any help with the uh, registration process, you can contact the Research Inquiry Service. They will help you a lot with regards uh, to this uh, uh, procedure. I hope it provided you a, a more or less uh, um, good overview on how does this does this work. And if you have some uh, question with regards to uh, the price itself, you can write to us directly either to the to ASMEA colleagues uh, or to us. You will see anyway in the rules of the contest you have all the contact details for the different um, types of in inquiries. And uh, that would be it actually in a nutshell. Um, I would like to give actually now the floor to, to our colleague uh, Julia Bialetska, who is going to provide us her testimonial with regards to her participation in the prize. And uh, just before giving the floor to to Julia, uh, I wanted to just remind that you have the Q&A section. I see that there are already some questions coming in and we are going to go through them uh, at the end of the presentation. So you still have time to, to ask uh, anything you would like to, 
to clarify. So uh, without further ado, uh, Julia, the floor is yours. Uh, now you will, uh, she will uh, introduce uh, her company herself, as well as give us an insight on how was her participation last year in the competition. Thank you so much, Julia. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you, everyone. And uh, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone has a great Friday. So yeah, I'm Julia. I'm CEO and co-founder of Aslab. And in Aslab, we produce sustainable packaging at the industrial scale. And um, a little bit about me, my background, I have a master's degree in biotechnology, but the funniest thing that I actually after graduation from university, I didn't work uh, in a biology field. I, I started to work in the software industry where I, where I was managing teams, processes, and uh, gaining this kind of a business side experience. And at the same time with this career in the software industry, um, I had a couple of entrepreneurial projects uh, for myself in the fashion industry. And uh, then uh, three years, almost three years ago, we founded Aslab. And uh, in Aslab, I became CEO and co-founder. And um, here, I think I combine all of the expertise or all the uh, experience from education in biology, biotechnology, and the business side. So I think uh, Aslab is the place where I can shine the best, actually, and, uh, you know, uh, work with all of my best features. And uh, what we do, we actually uh, work towards replacing polystyrene that decomposes for 500 years. So basically every single unit that was ever produced still remains somewhere in the landfills, pollute soils, oceans, and even our bodies. And of course, at the moment, the world is um, changing and all the packaging has to be recyclable or usable uh, in a couple of years. So we saw a huge opportunity there and uh, created a truly green packaging solution that consists of only two plant-based components. One is agricultural waste. So we take straws of the plants and the other one is mycelium or network of mushroom roots. So once we combine those two components, mycelium starts to bind agricultural waste together and we get a very strong and reliable material that can fully replace polystyrene as it has the same features in terms of durability, waterproof, and thermal insulation. But after the usage, if you break it and throw it into the soil, it will biodegrade in 30 days. So it is packaging that will never end up in landfills. And the main asset is that we actually are building our own innovative patented technology to produce this packaging at the industrial scale. And that's where our main innovation lays. So of course, the mix itself, uh, but then all around it, because, you know, if you want to work in the packaging industry and have a real impact and contribution to changes, um, you have to produce this kind of material at the industrial scale or in the big chunks. And uh, then we are also working towards scaling uh, our production to fit into the mini factories that uh, will be then deployed at the customer's premises. So this way we do not need to produce packaging at one facility and then distribute it around the world. Instead, we distribute our technology uh, and then save costs on logistics and then CO2 emissions for the logistics. So that's, this shows our approach to the business that we are not only doing the product that is sustainable, um, but also looking into all, every aspect of uh, our uh, actions and making sure that everything is sustainable, like as logistics, as supply chain and so on and so on. Um, so we already have paying customers. We have a couple of successful pilots with big companies and now working on the pipeline of the future customers. And uh, that's about that's about us. That's all. Uh, of course, if you want to learn more, just uh, pin me. Um, but yeah, then, uh, of course, want to talk more about the Women Prize and what that meant. Um, so just to emphasize again that I became a winner in the category of EIT Women Leadership. So I, I got the first prize. Um, and of course, this means a world to me. And uh, I also pointed here that it is a 50,000 euros prize. And as Sira mentioned a couple of times that this is a, a personal recognition. And what it actually means as well, that those money go to your personal bank account. And um, this money, like, they mean a lot for the founder. Because, you know, like, you, when you're a founder, it is a very... Uh, uncertain you know position and you can have bad times you can have good times so it is great to have this type of money on your personal bank account so just also wanted to point this out that of course it is not about money itself it's about recognition and uh, being in this community but this is also like a, a very nice addition to that and um, for what it means for me or what it meant for me it's actually 
uh, I call it, this was my, my Nobel Prize because I always try to be a leader. I always try to be a role model and especially for um, female because of course, like, you know, female leadership is underlooked and uh, there are still lots of BSS and even uh, in this 21st century when women are holding big positions, still there is lots of work to do. Um, so I was like really happy to be rewarded with this and like to see that the things that I'm doing they actually contribute to others and then others can see that and uh, this also gave me an access to a community of other uh, women innovators women leaders so even uh, so there are 10 there were 10 finalists uh, for this whole women prize um, in uh, 2023 and even the community of those 10 women uh, is really helpful because we created a chat among ourselves where we can discuss many many topics we had a very nice dinner at the uh, after the event uh, where also we shared so many things that we have in common we have so many problems in common we face so many biases in common but then everyone could share the experience how they can overcome those um so you know being just like part of even of this small community of the finalists is great but then if you look into it much um, uh, wider that it's a, a community of eat and eac and so many great women there well not only women of course and uh, then what also this prize gave to me personally is a lot of visibility but not only personally to me uh, but to our company as well so of course there were lots of media that uh, wanted to make an interview with us um, to share my personal journey to share what we do and um, so of course this really helps in uh, building and developing business also been invited to several panels uh, be a speaker be a participant so this opens a lot of doors, I would say, So uh, and helps with your personal visibility as well as company's visibility. And then I will share a couple of tips that I think helped us. And I would like to mention that was, this was the second time when we applied and only during the second time we actually got to the next stage. So during the first uh, um, application process, we were not successful, I would say, but then second, played quite well. So I think we took into consideration some of the mistakes that we made during the previous application process during the first time, during the first attempt. Um, so first of all, I think you have to really emphasize your innovation, your impact and future of your business, business or idea and uh, really focus on that because you have to show um, what, what impact will your business have? What is the innovation? Where does the innovation lay? Like, you know, have all of those proofs. And at the same time, you have to bring your own contribution into other women and girls. Uh, so show what, what you have been doing in that field um, and explain uh, in depth uh, how you've been doing that. Um, and it could be so, so many different ways. So like there is no one story, I would say, or one way how you could be doing contribution into others. It's all about your you and your story. So just sh share. Be sure to share your journey. To be sure to share to share your story, um, and of course, recognize the items that you do to support female leadership, especially if it's like if we are talking about EAT uh, leadership award. Um, and I would say that this should be two parts. Um, one, the contribution that you do into your team within your team, and then what is the contribution that you make externally. So in our team, uh, for example, we have very equal gender or we are very gender balanced. We have 50% of female, 50% of men. Um, and uh, also we have like, we are making a contribution to every female uh, person in the same way as to the males, of course. And we are all about creating an equal opportunities to everyone, you know, on all levels. When we are um, searching for a new person for the team, when we are, um, onboarding new person, we were, when we are training new person, how we are giving authority, responsibility, um, and he, how we are promoting those uh, uh, people in the team, as well as uh, we have a very, like we have a very structured coaching and one-on-one -on -one sessions. So I have one-on-one -on -one session with every team member, uh, including female, and this helps actually uh, women to get further in their career as we focus not only on the business goals, but on their personal goals, personal career goals as well. Um, so this is just like a, an example from I've been doing um, to support female leadership. And uh, then uh, I think what also helped us a lot actually during the application uh, phase, uh, what I call do the preparational work 
So be visible even before you apply into this award. Because um, we already got some visibility. We already were emphasizing, emphasizing that we are working towards a female leadership, that we have a team with a gender balance. So we've been already openly communicating those things into our social media, into the media that were like taking interviews from us. And we were like really emphasizing that we have a CEO uh, who is a female uh, founder and we're like clearly communicating um, what are the issues during this journey or what are the advantages, disadvantages, um, what access I have to some resources um, and to what resources I do not have as a female. So I would say um, try to get to you know be visible, uh, do some public speeches, do some appearances, any type of recognition that you can get in advance. So before applying to the um, application, they will play better uh, for you to be actually chosen. And if you already have some of those, uh, you know, don't be shy to bring them in this application and show that you've been recognized already um, by someone else as a leader, uh, you know, as the startup, as the business. And um, like just to summarize that the, for the application phase, it's really important to showcase both your company and yourself. And it has to have and it has to go hand in hand. So of course. While you're talking about your business, it's more about innovation, uh, impact and disruptiveness of the technology, future of the technology or overall future of the business. And when you are talking about yourself, it's more about you've been a, a role model, you've been a contribution to other women and you've been a leader if you're talking about EIT uh, Leadership Award. And this picture probably reflects the best. Uh, the you know how we are and how myself is con how i'm contributing to the um, female leadership this is the picture of our team so we are 10 people and five of uh, us are female so you know like here i would like to say that just be really a contribution to other female and to other women um you know like by doing some real actions and by implementing some policies uh, at your company and uh, then uh, Actually, I wanted to go back a little bit to, to the application phase. I know that the video is always like a concern to everyone during the application process. And again, we had two attempts, as I mentioned. So the first one was not successful. And I think probably for the second one, um, I thought that one of the issues with our first attempt was the video, actually, because um, I did it very last minute. So don't do that. Uh, try to put uh, some time and effort into making a video. And for the second time, just like remember that no one expects uh, for you to have a professional video recorded in the studio. That's not necessary at all. But by just using your own phone um, and you know recording on the high definition and uh, having some nice uh, background that you could create, you know, just by sitting on a chair with some flowers or something like that, you know, just create a nice background that is pleasant to view and uh, think about every single word that you are going to say on that video because it's only 90 seconds and it is very little time to say all of the things that you want to but just um, find those the most important and uh, you know um, do some rehearsals uh, make sure that you point out the, the sentences and the words that you want uh, for jury members to stick in their heads so really work on this video. Again, it doesn't have to be professional, but there are some small tricks, even with your phone, that you can make it look better, sound better. And the main thing is what you will actually say there. And then tips for the interview phase. So once you get lucky and you get to the next uh, phase uh, of the interviews, um, I would say here it is kind of the same tips as for the application process that you have to emphasize the impact, innovation, uh, disruptiveness of the technology and future development um, of your business. Again, and uh, I made it with big letters that even if you think that everything was very well outlined in your application about the impact, innovation and so on, still bring this, bring this up again. Because, of course, jury members cannot remember every application that they uh, reviewed. Um, they will have some questions that they will bring already. So they will be aware to some level of what you're doing. But you still should uh, communicate this again during the interview phase. And again, uh, show your own contribution into other women and girls and show this again. And here during the interview phase, of course, you will have uh, more freedom to speak and uh, to show, showcase more 
on that topic. And uh, I think the last tip, it's always quite controversial and a uh, sleepy road, whether you should bring your own personality to the table or should you talk only about your business. And when I was getting ready for this interview, um, I was also like very doubtful whether I should talk about the business, how we are developing our business, or should I bring some things that are very personal? And I decided to go all in and also bring uh, my own personal things. So as an example, what I brought um, in uh, during the interview is that I'm from Ukraine and of course been uh, in the war zone and uh, experiencing that, uh, of course, um, you know, affected me in many ways. So of course um, I brought this up. Then also I brought up that I have two kids, uh, small uh, kids, they are both girls. So basically, even it's a very stereotypical phrase, but what I said is that, of course, at the end of the day, everything I do now as a female role model, I do for them because I want a better future for them. And uh, then also like a minor thing is that I brought up that I just ran a half marathon before the interview. It was a couple of days. It was like a lucky coincidence. Um, but I think this, those things make you much more relatable uh, to the jury members. They can actually see your, your personality and they can understand your uh, motivation. Uh, they can understand your journey and why you're doing some of the things the way that you are doing. So uh, my personal recommendation would be don't, um, don't be shy to bring yourself. You, you all definitely have a great personality and uh, you just have to you know, bring this up. And uh, yeah, I think that's all on my side. Uh, happy to answer your questions. You can connect with me in any social media uh, just by finding me by the name. Also, here is my email. And um, like probably uh, the phrase that I would to say, I would like to say that just do it. Just start this application process because this will bring lots of insights to yourself about yourself and about your company. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. I think your testimonial, also uh, your, the the tips and the experience that you you share, it's actually very very uh, extensive and very. Uh, I think it will really help uh, a lot of people to prepare their application. So thank you so much for that. And now we will complement actually your uh, your uh, insights and your testimonial with the presentation by Josine Bakes, who was the uh, a jury member last year as well uh, in the prize, and she's going to give you now more the perspective of the jury member, to, so you will have the whole the whole picture now, both from the applicant and from the jury member. Without further ado, I would just like to give the floor to, to Yosin. I will share the screen for uh, for you. If you meanwhile could uh, introduce a bit yourself, it would be very nice, Yosin. So the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone, and also a warm welcome on my end. Um, I don't know, Yulia, if you've noticed it, because it was really nice, because Yulia had on the slide that one of the great aspects of this call is that you actually get a community along with it. And while you were uh, presenting, Yulia, there were so many people applauding and sharing hearts with you. So I don't know if you saw it, but I just wanted to uh, to share it with you because I felt it. <laughs> um, no, but I can actually drop the mic, uh, Ciro, because Julia has actually already been sharing everything already. Uh, but there might be some little additional ads on that I can share with you um, that is going to be of support to you and your journey. Because like, no matter how you want to look at it right now, uh, I will already want to say congratulations. I think, first of all, of finding this call uh, and this place. And then considering uh, to join this journey. And now you already took your first step because you're here. And uh, the reason that I'm here is because I want to help you making it easier to set the next steps. Because, of course, writing an application, it's not the easiest of all things, isn't it? Not everyone has already practiced for several times. So how can you make that journey more um, easy and more fun? Because I believe that the more fun that you have, in preparing this application, the more fun that we as jury members have in reading it, honestly. Um, so what are tips that I have for you in terms of preparing your application? Um, Ciro has already shared those three dimensions that they are using in order to evaluate your work, which is innovation, impact, and your uh, leadership capabilities. And if I might give the first tip, 
make sure to follow that structure of the three buckets that they have given to you and provide all the information that is needed within those lines because often we are reading applications where certain information is mixed and mingled and imagine we are reading so many applications and trying to look for the right information in other buckets is quite time consuming so how can you make sure to provide us with the right information in the right bucket one thing that i highly recommend is to create an argumentation three in advance so when you're preparing your application look into all the different criteria and sub criteria that are demanded from you to provide so allow me to give you a little bit of a sneak peek into what I am often looking for when I'm reading an application. So when it comes to being a breakthrough innovation, when you try to argument this, make sure to really, really in detail describe your innovation. Uh, explain to us how it's differentiating from existing innovations. So do, for instance, a bit of a competitor analysis. Really under make us understand how you stand out because we do not know every market in detail and you know it. And the great thing is, is that we love your expertise and reading into it, so provide it. And then as well in this innovation dimension, make really sure to argument so clearly why your innovation is feasible so share with us your partner network share with us i don't know letters of intent the the research and development process uh, the finance the backing of expertise share the whole bing bang because it's really going to help us in understanding how your innovation is truly disruptive and innovative in comparison with other innovations out there and then the second dimension if I may, what are other argumentation sub things that you should consider? Well, the second dimension is impact and what makes your innovation really impactful from the moment that you're addressing a real need. So make sure that to share with us really an insight into the market, showcase your market knowledge and evidence how you are clearly meeting an unmet need by, for instance, demonstrating demand and how you're meeting the demand, how much you've already delivered upon that demand. And then one thing that Julia also highlighted is really clearly demonstrate what your current impact is but also what the growth potential is. So give us a forecast, take us with you on your visions, your dreams and your journeys and back it up with some good numbers. And then last but not least, this inspiration part, Julia has really said it all, but we want to hear your personal story. It's really all about you. So take that space, take that space to talk about you, your background, decisions that you took, jobs that you had, um, credible uh, evidences of your leadership. We love to read those kind of things. And then as well, how you very concretely had a value within your company, but also how others are complimenting you. So that's about the argumentation tree. Really, if you look into those sub criteria first and you start then filling out the details, it makes it much more fun. You have a clear overview and we have it too. Then another thing that Julia also highlighted is, Key phrases. Every time you're opening a paragraph, when you're closing it, make sure to round things up. Take us on that journey with you. It's so amazing to read over those kind of things and be reminded with keywords, key phrases into what you actually want to convey. Uh, it makes it easier for us to remember you. Um, so totally check in on that with yourself and avoid jargon. Like we know that you are an expert in your field, but imagine that we do not know all those terms and terminologies. And the more things that I do not know when I'm reading your application, the more I get distracted, the more it's disturbing. So try to keep things on the ground. Try to keep it easy, stupid, simple uh, at some points, because this is how you really take us with you. Then the second uh, cluster of my tips is images and colors. You know, you have this whole document in front of you and sometimes I'm reading over applications that are just a sum of words and I will truly, truly try to concentrate reading through it. But what makes it so pleasurable and fun to look into someone's work if it's also translated into images? So try to see what kind of stories you can support with images, maybe look into uh, listing some things in certain colors, but make it fun to read um, and it makes it easier for us to read. And then last but not at least the third one final tip that i have it's it is really about you this whole 
call, this whole program is about you, but also really make sure to highlight how you're impacting others. So what Julia already said, really try to be very evident and clear on how you've already impacted other women and girls and also how you're planning to still do that in the future. Take us with you. And um, I'm 100% sure that things are going to be fine. So those are the tips on my end. Last but not least, really try to have a lot of fun and also include others in your writing journey. So check in with others, ask others for support and input uh, because you're not all by yourself. Thank you so much, Josine, for sharing your insights. I think it is very valuable to also be able to get into the mind of the evaluator because it, it is true that Sometimes one put forward their uh, their application, but do not really get into the mind of like, oh, how is the evaluator going to take it? And what is the evaluator struggling through with all these applications? You know, you receive hundreds of applications and it is difficult sometimes to stand out. So thank you so much for these tips, Yosin. And now that we are all together, I would like to give the floor to you actually for the questions and answers. Uh, you can ask questions to any of the speakers and uh, I will start already with some of the questions that we have in chat and the, in the Q&A section, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, so then you also have time to think a bit more if you want some uh, to ask something else. So uh, on one hand, I already uh, I was already answering some of them in, in written, but uh, just for you to know. So how many applications did we get last year? So in total, they were around 300. 30 applications, if I'm not mistaken, Jorge, yes, uh, uh, right? Yes, okay, so they were 330. So there was not pre-selection, if that's what you want to to, to know. Uh, how many winners there will be overall in each category? So in total, it is three winners per prize category, nine for the whole competition. In the case, it was also last year, uh, if there's exactly the same, same, scoring uh, of two um, candidates it could be the case that one prize gets split uh, um, by more than more than one uh, participant no if i recall it was one of the ac categories right jorge where it was yes. uh, we had two winners it was rising yeah, yes sorry, oh, right. it was rising rising yes. star um there were two at least so like there were four uh winners in that category mm. instead of three exactly exactly that is how that is how it works so normally Three, but it could be more depending if it's like the, some draw between the, the, the applicants. Uh, one more we have. Uh, so a question regarding the exclusion criteria. We receive a prize from Women Tech EU, EAT Health, as well as a grant from EAC Accelerator. Will it be possible to apply to the one, one of the uh, EAC categories, but with other follow-up activities? I think I received your... Uh, I, I think I know who you are actually. So. Uh, it will depend a lot if uh, first thing so the grant is okay so if you have received a grant for the for the activity is okay but then whether if you if you want to receive a, a price it will depend on how different it is the activity from the one you submitted the first so for example uh, the first time you were awarded for a prototype or a um, business idea like the best business idea in the world and now you have like a much more mature product that you are already commercializing this might count as a new activity but this we have to analyze on a case by case uh, scenario so the more the most information you can give us regarding the activity you had in the past the better also the nature of the price i know it's like uh, the women uh, the european price for women innovators is a bit different to other prices in the sense that we are assessing both your innovation and you yourself so if you, let's say, won another women prize in the past, it is also important that the contributions and the achievements that you put forward are also different to so differentiate that activity from this one. For example, the, the last time you won the prize, you, you were recognized for your uh, contributions, scientific contributions towards a project. And now you are presenting, you're putting forward your success in commercializing the product. This could be considered as a new activity as well because you are adding a significant new development but again this is on a case-by-case -case scenario so if you have doubts please uh, write to us and we will uh, answer the the question then uh, next one i have looking at the registration form for the pick uh, it seems that it is company focused it is the same actually for both the the companies and the and the natural uh, 
person if you want to see because i know some of the wordings like legal name etc but if you put your mouse over the little info bubble uh, it will uh, tell you what you have to put in the form in case you are a natural person but if you have any question regarding this you can uh, there's a, a contact uh, uh, contact email in the website that you can uh, ask further questions to. If, but I hope if, it answers your question. I don't know if Jorge, you have some more. So yes. Thank you, because I also see here a question from, I think, Elsa Brio, that is uh, also asking if it's not possible to use the tender portal of the company of she needs to create a new one. As Ciro said at the beginning, and I also said in my presentation, this is a price to recognize women. We are not recognizing a company. So that's the big difference. So then please, when you register and when you send and you are the coordinator, the coordinator is Julia Bialetska, and it's not the company that Julia is the CEO. So you see, that's how you have to put it, because we are recognizing the work of Julia. Julia is the role model, she's the winner, she's the best one in the world, while the company is another thing. So please put it really forward, because it's, this is something, this is an eligibility criteria. And then that business. so if you do that wrong, then you will be out excluded from the competition so please be really clear on the on this uh, on this part okay because we want to avoid that you do all the job and only because you didn't understand this part on the on the rule of contest then you will be disqualified okay so register as a natural person even if you have to create a new profile do it right exactly jorge thank you so much for the clarification uh, I was just reading a bit through more. I have some other questions here. Uh, so the startups that are not registered prior 1st of January 2022 cannot participate at all or they do not receive points regarding that criteria. No, this is very important, actually. I've seen it uh, several times in the in the question chat, etc. But it is an essential criteria that you need to meet in order to participate. So if your company was registered after the 1st of January of 2022, then in this edition, you cannot participate, perhaps in the next one. It depends on whether you registered it, but it is really important that it was registered at that time. Yes, Julia, I'm sorry, sorry you wanted to, to say something. Yeah, I wanted to add. Um, so yeah, in our case, we were also regist registered after the January 1st, so we were registered. We're actually, we applied with the EU entity that is registered in Estonia and it was registered in fe February 2022 uh, because of the you know uh, very well known reasons um, and you know technically we were not then eligible for the application but um, EIT uh, reached out to us asking about that and we were able to provide the registration documents from Ukraine that uh, verified that we actually started earlier and then just had to relocate and to move and have the, another registration entity. So I saw a similar question to that, that if you already had the company previously, but then for some reason you had to register a new one, I think you still could apply. And this, of course, would be looked, I think, uh, uh, case by case. So in our case, we were able to prove that this activity that we started was actually earlier than uh, January 2022, because we had previously a company registered in Ukraine. Exactly. Thank you, Julia, actually, for, for clarifying, because I had forgot about this specific case. Uh, it is exactly as Julia is saying, you need to be able to demonstrate that the activity, so the, the, that your company, even if it's not called exactly the same, but you need to demonstrate that it is the continuation of the same company, at least on the same activity. Um, and if you're able to provide documentary evidence, uh, it is uh, it would be acceptable but of course it, it is m most likely it is in, in more exceptional cases no but let's say if if there's a, a, a case in which you are not 100 percent sure you can you can contact us and we will uh, we will look uh, together into the the issue uh, okay perfect um what else do we have so we have for the participants should she be just a co-founder of a company or can we, I'm sorry, participate with a startup idea? So you need to be, so the applicant, as it was mentioned, it needs to be a founder or co-founder. And uh, the start, startup, I mean, you need to have a company, uh, but uh, of course it needs to be registered before the the, um, the time that is specified in the, in the call text. Um, 
what else let me see if there's something I can, new. yes I can please take maybe this one read from it. Gabriel Almeida about the women take you mm -hmm. so yes. women take you and the other calls are EU grants not prices so the EIC prices you can take a look to our website to see which one are like capital so say innovation etc etc but the grants so that's what we always say about the double funding if you receive a new grant that's okay but it's not a not a price okay So here uh, you have one from Tatiana. Uh, if you can clarify if they have to be part of the IT community before they apply, they apply to the price, and then how can how can we do it? Yes, I mean you need to provide the the, the documentary evidence that you have participated in this uh, in these uh, programs before the um, the call, but. I mean, of course, it really depends on the case as well. If you have doubts, you can write to us. Um, you can write to us and we will look into the issue. But what is important is this, that you, you have the documentary evidence that you have been supported by the, the, the EIT, one of the EIT knowledge and innovation communities. So we have here another one from Jana about the, the company registered on the, in, 20, in January 2024. If she can apply to that, if you want, Jana, you can uh, contact us in the in the email, and then we will check uh, that. But as a general, we said that then needs to be registered before the 2022, because as we also as we said at the beginning, this is a recognition price, and we want to see that then you are really a role model. So then to be a role model, I'm I think that then you need to have a big career behind you to make a real change in your company, but also outside. Okay, but uh, if you have any any quick doubt, please uh, come back to us. We are checking if there is anybody, anything else. We're seeing like the, the, the issue on applying to more than one category. This we have to, you have to write to us. We are actually waiting for an opinion by the commission services on, on this particular one, because it can be problematic. Technically, you could end up um, awarding the same activity. So we have to see whether it does not, uh, it does not, uh, conflict with the double uh, funding prohibition so better write to us and we will uh, we will provide you the input on on this one we have also here one for Josin. now is your your turn they would like to know a bit more about any tip about the video how you saw it and what you think that this would be good for the for them to record thanks for the question um imagine that we are reading your application those 15 pages, what is really great if you in your video can really highlight those key elements of your application. So what already Julia highlighted, really briefly explain the innovation, the impact, and then really also highlight you, your personal story and the impact that you made as a person. Make this video as personal as possible. So no fancy pancy software needed or anything, really just record it behind your laptop show some of your environment i don't know take us with you um but imagine that it's really great after this video that i just remember you easily so highlight the key elements and you're going to be fine i think that the jury members they have to assess uh, uh, almost 300 applications so you need to make sure that what you write what you put in the video then really calls their attention because otherwise with 300 applications over two three months then that will skip their mind so yeah please. And I think one thing that I want to highlight here is really don't upload any of your company videos. So some people are just like uploading their company pitch, but this is very impersonal, isn't it? Like we know that you've already created this in advance and it's way nicer to just see you and have a feeling that you're talking to me. Um, so really put that authenticity first, uh, rehearse a couple of times, as Julia said, and then share it with us. So. That's why now you see here Julia when she was talking, and then you could see the passion that she puts in the in the in the image. So please do as Julia is doing. So sell yourself, sell why you are the best one. Okay. Here later we have some questions about the um, the revenues, if it's profitable or not. So please take a look to really the evaluation criteria. So you have three of them, and then there there they are really clear what we are looking for this year. I have it here on the screen. So the innovation, the impact that you are doing. So how this is changing the the world, how it's changing and benefit the, the then and the third one, the inspiration. As I always say, why you are inspiring the others to follow you. So these are the three criteria that we are looking for. 
Okay, and as we said at the beginning, then you will have all the 15 pages. Make sure that you write everything in the three hour, in the three criteria. So don't put everything in the first one and then forget about the other ones because if not, you will receive a 10 in the first one, but you will fall on the on the number two and three, and then you will be out. So let me see if do we have anything else? That I'm maybe... trying to reply some of them already in written. Uh, one that stands out, UK part, uh, UK entities can participate in this. So if you are from the UK, please feel free to to um, to apply. Percentage of equity, so uh, uh, of ownership to be considered founder, I guess. So what is important is that you are able to provide documentary evidence that you were one of the founders, co-founders. It's not so much about the percentage of of equity. Again, you can write to us in order to clarify this, this kind of things. So regarding the nationality and everything, so then please take a look to the admissibility and uh, admissibility and eligibility criteria. There is, we write really clear the different conditions that you need to uh, to fulfill to apply to the to the category so to the to the competition so please read it well there exactly what we say when you have to be registered and be part of the member states or associated countries also the footnotes then everything there is really clear about what we what we say the age requirement also please then take a look exactly then as we said you need to be uh, less than 35 for rice innovative category but then on the others there's no but please read really because these questions are really clear in the in the rule of contest i have one question because i, I believe that's so one question related to like being for instance several female co-founders and wanting to apply for this call how does that work what do you guys recommend I recommend that they they write to us because we, I I still don't have an, an, an a particular answer uh, to this question. Is what I was mentioning before that because at least I I'm not quite sure how that does can conflict or not with the double funding funding provision. So we're just waiting for a for a legal opinion by the Commission services on this. So please uh, write to us and we will and we will reply to you directly if you are in this particular situation. So I also wanted to address a question about the fear. Someone asked, how do I overcome my fear to apply? Um, in, uh, in Ukraine, we have a very nice phrase that if I translate it means something like eyes are scared or feel the, you know, they, they, they feel the fear, but the hands are doing. So that's the only way I think that you can overcome your fear is just to do that start the application process, you know, even don't think about that as a whole application process and then being scared of actually getting the award. Just think about it like step by step. So the first step is to get registered in that portal, then look into the criteria, then, you know, see the application form, then look into the video, what you want to say there. So just break it down to the steps. But, you know, um, sometimes to be a leader, you have to look straight into your fears eyes but still go for it and do all of those things. Um, so like, really there is nothing that anyone could tell you except just doing that. You have to overcome this fear. And um, again, I think as female uh, leaders, there is much more things that we could be worried about and much more of a perception how people see us. Um, and that's the only thing that we can do. Just be there, be visible, uh, don't be shy, sell yourself. Look how men sell themselves and sell yourself. Yes, maybe not in the same way, but you know, still sell yourself. Well, I think one thing to add on to this because, like, it's very easy to talk about your company, isn't it? Because that's what we are used to. Oh, blah, blah, blah. But how to talk about yourself? And one tip that really helped me, at least as well, is to talk with other people that are close to me about me. So ask other people around me, like, hey, what are the things that I should highlight about myself, my accomplishments, my personality, my journey? And then you will get quite beautiful feedback, first of all, um, and it will really help you shape your story. In case you get a little bit stuck on your own personal story, this is a really must try. And, and here I think we have the last question from Camille Bouguet about the language of the application. So it, of course, you know, that at the European level, we uh, promote that the, all the languages are, are equal. So it's uh, one of the actually the diversity of the European Union. So of course, you are free to send the application in, the, in, your, uh, in one of the EU official languages. So that's not a, not a problem for, the, for any of the competitions and for anything at European level. 
And I think for the rest of questions, as uh, Ciro wrote here, there are many of them that are already answered in the rule of contest. We always say, please, before contacting or before doing anything, read every detail of the rule of contest because everything, almost everything, is explained there. And only then, also in the funding and this portal, you will find answers to many of the questions that you have. So please read the questions, read the rule of contest, and only if you think that there is not a address, then come back to, to us. Okay, thank you. Yes, and just one last thing because I know many of you might be wondering. I will I will follow up with you on an email. I will send you the the main contact uh, information and and links as well as you will re be receiving the the recording. So don't worry for that. You will have more more information uh, after the the event finishes. So I think we're already a bit over time. So if there's still as as Jorge mentioned, if there are some questions uh, still not solved, please go through the rules of the contest and the information in the funding and tenders portal or write to, to us directly. Thank you so much uh, to all the speakers. Thank you so much, Julia, Jorge and uh, Josine. And thank you also so much for all of you uh, for coming. I really hope that you have a very nice day and uh, don't forget to apply. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you and good luck. Thank you, Ron. Bye bye. Thank you so much. See you. I'm going to end the meeting now.